Okay, if uh, there is only one force acting on an object, calculating torque is easy. Just you are going to calculate F times T times sine theta. So then you will find the magnitude. If the uh, rotation is clockwise, torque is negative. Neg rotation is counterclockwise, torque is positive. But sometimes there can be more than one force acting on an object. In this case, you should calculate the net torque because torque is a vector quantity. You are going to calculate the resultant torque by adding the torque of individual forces. So if more than one force acts on an object, in this case, first calculate the individual torque of on the object and calculate the torque of each forces. Then calculate the net torque by adding up the individual torques. So they assume that there are three forces acting on an object. Each force produces a torque, torque 1, torque 2, torque 3. Then add them all. So you are going to calculate the net torque acting on the object. So then let's solve a problem. It's um, one of the multiple choice questions and then the very popular in ministry exam. Question says that if each force is 6 Newton, there are two forces acting on the bicycle wheel. F1 is acting tangent, F2 is acting at some angles to the wheel. The angle between F1 and F2 is 60 degrees, so this angle is given as 60 degrees. And the radius of the wheel is 1 meter, so that radius is equal to 1 meters. 1 meter. So then what is the resultant torque on the wheel? So calculate the net torque, it's asking. So what is torque net? So again, uh, we will apply this rule. First, calculate the individual torque on the object. So then I will calculate them one by one. This is the bicycle wheel. First, let's draw the F1, only F1. So F1 is acting tangent to the bicycle wheel. F1 is acting tangent to the bicycle wheel. And it is 60 Newton. And every tangent line is perpendicular to the radius. This is the axis of rotation. And uh, the distance from force to the axis of rotation is radius, which is equal to also distance for the torque. Uh, it's going to be 1 meter. So rotation is clockwise or counterclockwise. Let's check this. To do that, use your pen or pencil. Fix it from x of rotation. x of rotation is the center. And push the pen in the direction of the force. Force is up to the plane of the page, yes. So push your pen in the direction of the force. It is counterclockwise. So then this is rotating. This force causes a counterclockwise rotation. So it's positive. So torque 1 is positive. So put a positive sign. F times F1 times distance. Sine 90, because 90 is 1, that's why you don't need to write it. Positive F1 is 6 Newton. Distance is 1 Newton. But 1 meter, sorry. The multiplication is 6 Newton dot meter is torque 1. And second force. For second force, I will draw the wheel again. But second force is making an angle with the first one, which means second force is making an angle of 60 degree with the vertical line. I will draw a vertical line which is tangent line to the bicycle wheel. And second force is making an angle of 60 degrees. So F2 is making an angle of 60 degrees with the vertical line. And this is the X of rotation. F2 is again 6 Newton. So um, let's first uh, get uh, if this is again the 1 meter by the time. Uh, rotation is clockwise or counterclockwise. The same method, then fix it your pen from the axis of rotation. Push in the direction of the force. So it's again rotation is this force also causes a counterclockwise rotation, so positive torque. So then let's calculate it. But um, torque is torque 2 is F2 times distance times, yes, there is an angle. That's why we should use sine theta here. It's not 90 degree. This was 90, sine 90 was 9, 1. It's just, we didn't write it, but here, angle is 990. So what is angle? First, we should get it. So we are, to get the angle, you should draw a distance line, a very long distance line first, long, as long as possible. 
and then draw a line along the force. The angle between these two line is this. This is your uh, angle for calculating. Theta is this, not that. Generally, students are doing mistake. They are when as soon as they see there is a sixty degree, then they are writing angle is sixty. No. This angle is the angle between the force and vertical line, but we are going to get the angle between the force and distance line. That's why it is 90 minus 60. 90 minus 60, which is equal to 30 degrees. So you are going to write here 30, not 60. So then it's also positive. You have positive F2 is 6 Newton again. Distance is again 1 from force to extra rotation, which is the reduced, which is equal to 1, multiplied by sine 30. So sine 30 is 1 over 2. So then if you multiply this, you are going to get positive 3 Newton meter. So there are, as I said, two forces, F1 and F2. Each produces torque. One of them produces positive 6. The other one produces positive 3. And then net torque or resultant torque is sum of these two forces. Torque, sorry, 6 plus 3, which is equal to 9 Newton dot meter. So this is the solution of this problem. And simple problem. A basketball is being pushed by two players during tip-off. One player exerts a downward force of 11 Newton. This figure is given the question. F1 is pushed down with 11 Newton at the distance of 7 centimeter from the extra rotations, which is 0.07. The second player applies an upward force. Yes, second player upward force. So this is the second. This is the first player. So according to the the basketball two played one player is downward so then f1 is pushing downward let's say f2 second player let's say f2 is the second player applies an upward force of 15 newton at perpendicular distance is 14 so that is that distance is 14 centimeters so in meter 0 0.014 from the observation find the net torque acting on the ball so we will do that um uh, there are two forces so you should calculate of course two torque torque one Torque 1 is equal to F1 times D1 times and F sine theta 1. Let me write it. Sine theta is 90 degree. Uh, so then if we draw this uh, force, that is the lever arm or moment arm, which is equal to 0 0.07. Force is 11 Newton. So then is it clock? This force causes a clockwise rotation or counterclockwise rotation. Let's get it. Again, same method. Fix it from the X rotation and push it in the direction of force. This force is down to the plane of the page. Push your pen down to the plane of the page so pen is rotating clockwise. So then this force causes a clockwise rotation so it is negative. So let's calculate negative. F1 is 11. Uh, lever arm or the moment arm is given perpendicular distance is 0 0.07. So if you multiply them all it's going to be uh, let's multiply it 11 times 0 0.07, which is equal to, pardon, yeah, 11 times, 11 times 0 0.07, which is equal to 0 0.77, yeah, 0 0.77, negative 0 0.77 Newton meter. And let's calculate it for this one, talk two. Uh, again, first let's determine the direction of the uh, torque, torque 2. Again, fix it from, fix your pan from the extra rotation, which is the center of the ball. Push in the direction of the force. Force is up to the plane of the page, F2. Push it. So when you push it, it's rotating again clockwise. So this force also produces a negative torque. So torque 2 is F2 times so let's say D2, this is D1. F2 times D2 times sine theta. Theta is 90 degrees, so that sine 90 is 1. Negative F2 is 15. Distance 2 is 0 0.14. And the sine theta is 1. So let's multiply it. 15 multiplied by 0 0.14, which is equal to negative 2.1 Newton meter. Now we calculated the torque of each force, torque 1 and torque 2. Question is calculate the net torque. Torque net is equal to torque 1 plus torque 1 plus torque 2. So torque 1 is 
negative 0 0.77, this one. Torque 2 is negative 2.1. So add them all. Uh, negative 0 0.77, negative 2.1, which is equal to negative 2.87 Newton meter is the answer of this question. So then because it's negative, this ball rotates clockwise. Clockwise rotation. And uh, one of the section review question. Calculate the torque for each force acting on the bar in the figure. Yes, there's a figure. Calculate the torque of each force acting on the bar in the figure. Assume the axis is the perpendicular to the page and pass through the point O. So this is the X of rotation given. In what direction will object rotate? Of course, to get the direction of rotation, you should calculate the net torque. Net torque is needed. If positive, you will understand rotation is counterclockwise. If negative, rotation is clockwise. Okay, this is extra rotation. First, this 30 Newton cannot produce a torque because it's acting on extra rotation. So let's give number for this one. I will say this is the F1. F1. This I will say F2. And this is going to be F3. So F3 produces torque 3, 0. Now let's calculate other two torque of other two forces. And uh, let's start from F1. First, uh, distance from force to axis of rotation, this distance is given 2 meters. So distance is 2 meters for F1. And force is 25. And then the angle between distance line and the force line. Yes, not this angle, that angle. So 90 minus 31, which is 90 minus 31, 90 minus 31, which is 59 degrees. This angle is 59 degrees. We are not going to get angle between the force and vertical line. We'll get the angle between force and distance line. Okay, direction of rotation, clockwise or counterclockwise. So then fix it from the extra rotation. Push in the direction of the in the direction of the force, it is counterclockwise. Positive. Then let's calculate torque 1. Torque 1 by force 1. F1 times distance 1 times sine theta 1. So then F1. It's positive. Yes. F1 is 25. Distance from force to axis of rotation is 2 meters. Multiplied by sine of the angle between force and distance line. 59. Let's multiply them all. 25 times 2 times sine of 59 degrees. Answer is 42.9. 42.9. So torque 1 is equal to positive 42.9 Newton that meter. And let's calculate torque of force 2. So angle is correct angle because uh, distance line is this. This is the force line, 23 degree. We will use this angle as angle between force and distance line. And distance for F2 is from force to extra rotation. It is four meter, four meters. Rotation is clockwise or counterclockwise. Okay, put your pen fix from the extra rotation or push in the direction of the force, direction of the force is that. So when you push it in the direction of the force, the pen is rotating clockwise. So this force causes a negative torque. So torque 2, negative F, pardon, let's write first the equation, F2 D2 sine theta 2. Negative F2 is 10, D2 is 4 sine theta 2 sine 20. Let's multiply them all. Negative 10 multiplied by 4 multiplied by sine of 23 degrees, which is equal to negative 15.6. Negative 15.6 Newton dot meter. And now torque 3 is 0. And torque net. 
Talk one plus talk two plus talk three. Talk one, positive 42.9. Talk two, negative 15.6. Talk three, zero. Add them all. So, 42.3. Talk one, negative 15.6. Talk two, which is negative positive, if I had pardon, positive 26.7. Newton dot meter because it's positive so rotation is counter counter clockwise okay this is the solution of this problem and one last title about uh, net talk in fact this is uh, a little different than uh, calculating net talk which is called required talk in fact Required torque is, uh, sometimes students get confused. Until here, we didn't care about if a torque can rotate an object or cannot rotate an object or accelerates the, an object. We didn't care about this until here. We just calculated torque. Torque is big or small. We can make a ball a torque greater if you increase the force, you can make a torque greater. Or if you increase the distance, you can make it greater. If you make angle closer to 90 degree, you can make torque greater. But we didn't care if this torque can rotate an object or not. But now we care about this. If a torque can rotate an object or not. So, uh, till now we calculated torque of a force applied by a specific source at a specific direction at a specific magnitude so we said it is the applied force but now we are going to check if torque is able to rotate an object or not because there are other th invisible forces like friction or some other thing forces which can stop the rotation of an object. In reality, there are other forces such as if air resistance or friction which produce contracting torques. So then if applied torque, you apply something to... If applied torque is less than contracting torque, object does not rotate. Okay, this is the case. So I am pushing this pan down. So friction force acts between the table and the pan. But now, if I push this pan with my finger, with small force, then I cannot rotate it. Because friction force, that invisible friction force, produces a counteracting torque greater than my finger's torque. But if I increase the force of my finger, finally, the force applied torque of my finger becomes greater than the friction torque of the friction force, then the object can start rotating. So then we can say that if applied torque is less than counteracting torques, object does not rotate. But if applied torque and counteracting torques are equal, object is ready to rotate. But if applied torque is greater than the counteracting torque, object accelerates. We will study this in section 3. So angular acceleration. Then this minimum amount of applied torque that starts the rotation of an object is defined as required torque so a minimum amount of the torque that starts the rotation of an object defined as required torque for example this is one of the example if the torque required question sets have required to loosen a nut on a wheel has a car has a magnitude of 40 50 meter so which means there is a counteracting torque because of the friction or other things which is equal to 40 15 meter so you should first produce that 40 newton meter torque, torque, then object this range will start rotating or this nut will start rotating. So what minimum force must be exerted by a mechanic at the end of 30 centimeter range to loosen the nut? Of course, that mechanic must produce minimum torque, which is 40. So mechanics torque must be equal to 40 newton dot meter. So then object is ready to rotate. Object is ready to rotate. Applied torque must be equal to counteracting torque. Okay, so then we said that this mechanic must produce a torque which is minimum for the Newton dot meter. 
A distance of the range is given as 30 centimeter. D is equal to 30 centimeter, which is 0.3 meters. And uh, we will calculate how much force, how much minimum force is must be applied to start rotation. We know that torque is equal to F D sine theta. If you want to calculate F, you should simplify it by D sine theta. Both sides divide by D sine theta. So then F is going to be torque divided by D sine theta. So we know what is, we know what the what torque is, we know what the is, which is the third centimeter, because we are going to add at the end, which means, so then if this is the range, I'm going to draw it here. So here is the net. You should apply the force somewhere here. That's why distance to the axis of rotation must be called exactly the length of the range, which is equal to 0 0.3 meter. But the angle, if you want force to be minimum, your angle must, sign must be maximum. Sign is maximum at what angle? 90 degree. So then if you apply the force at 90 degrees, so then sine 90 becomes 1. So then torque becomes minimum. All right, let's calculate in this case. What is the minimum force? Torque is equal to given as 40. Distance is 0 0.3. Sine 90 is 1. So then 40 divided by 0 0.3, which is equal to 133. Minimum force to start rotation, to start to loosen this nut is 133.3 Newton, which means if force is less than this number, F force acts 131 Newton, no rotation, no loosening. But if a torque is greater than that, yes, there's a loosening, even accelerating. So if this force cannot loosen, but any force greater than that number can loosen this range. How would the force needed to change if you put the handle in the middle of the door? Remember, this is, I'm going to draw a door. This is the door. General door rotates about hinge. There is an extra rotation. Hinge is the extra rotation here. So you apply a perpendicular force at the end because all the doorknobs are at the end to a distance of T, which means you are going to take this force to the middle, it says, in the middle. Okay, if you take this handle here, this, so what should you do? How much force is needed to rotate the, uh, the or, uh, in compared to initial case? Okay, let's say that when distance is D, force is F, so this torque is enough to rotate the door. So F times T is the torque which is needed, required to start the rotation. But if when you make distance half, T over 2 for the second case. So you should again apply the same, to produce the same torque to start rotation. Remember, if the torque is less than the minimum torque, then you are not able to rotate the door. That's why if you decrease distance by two, to get the same amount of torque, you should increase the force by two. That's why force must double to start the rotation of the door again. 